Good evening. Normally this report to you is given from a podium in our council chamber in front of an audience. A year from now, I look forward to returning to that podium and seeing all of you in person. And I appreciate you joining me now. President Kennedy reminded us that when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters, one representing danger and the other opportunity. The past 12 months have indeed brought crisis to our city and nation. I'll let others debate the national response to COVID. As for your city's response, it has made me proud. Our employees have kept working every day, picking up your trash, making sure your water is turned on, providing every conceivable recreation program that could be safely offered, communicating with you about COVID and about the precautions that have helped us make it through, offering assistance to our partners in the business community. I want to encourage everyone to continue to follow the CDC guidelines to protect yourselves and others and our employees will continue their exemplary service to you. Indeed, our response to the pandemic is one of the reasons that on this day in 2021, I can report to you that the state of our city is strong. I've said it before, Goose Creek is perhaps the most well-placed city in the most well-placed state in the most well-placed region of our country to take advantage of the new economy. The world's most important airline manufacturer is minutes to our south, a world-class automaker is minutes to our north. State-of-the-art aluminum and aviation plants, lighting manufacturers, and steel fabricators reside within our own city's borders. One of the highest-ranked tourist destinations in the world is a 20-minute drive. That destination is Charleston. But my friends, Charleston does not sit atop Money Magazine's list of the best places to live in South Carolina. Neither does Somerville, or North Charleston, or Mount Pleasant, or Greenville or Myrtle Beach. That title belongs to your hometown, the city of Goose Creek. Money Magazine's accolade showed the entire nation and indeed readers around the world what we have known well. Goose Creek has arrived. Safe streets, high quality public services, dependable fire protection, and economic growth are but some of the factors playing a role in our recognition. Accolades are nice to read and nice to brag about. But tonight, I want to use this time to focus on you, because while national recognition and praise is good, I'm much more concerned about the things our city does for all of us. I call it the livability of our city. I want Goose Creek to be a great place to read about, sure. But above all, I want it to be a great place to live for the folks who call it home. That means great recreation. It means the finest law enforcement and fire protection. It means your trash gets picked up on time, every time. It means you live in a city whose leadership is constantly striving to be better and meet the ever-growing and changing needs of its citizens. To that end, economic development is paramount. When I ran to be your mayor in 2018, no concern was raised more often than that of the need for more retail and restaurant opportunities. I heard you and took action. We have focused on rebranding our city and more aggressively marketing ourselves. We have cultivated a relationship with other cities and organizations we never had before. I am now proud to represent the city of Goose Creek on the board of directors for the Charleston Metro Chamber of Commerce. We have worked with commercial developers, rather than against them, to promote development that enhances the livability of Goose Creek. Those efforts continue to pay dividends. Even during a pandemic, new businesses have opened and been successful. Several more businesses have opened or will be opening soon, including Charleston Sports Pub and Steel City Pizza in 2020 and Chipotle in the months ahead. And perhaps the most exciting new addition will be coming soon in 2021 is the brewery and restaurant that will occupy the former fire station on Button Hall Avenue. When our fire department moved into its new headquarters station, the old station could have been used for storage or for office space. We could have sold it to the highest bidder and let the chips fall where they may. But that wouldn't be putting our residents first. And so we made a plan. 
we teamed up with a company that specializes in bringing in just the type of establishment that was at the top of our list. Our hard work and patience paid off. And I look forward to raising a glass with you at the brewery in the very near future. Economic development includes recognizing your success and paying it back during times of need. The reason we now have the fund balance that we have is because of the success of our business community. I know in economic development, support for existing businesses, particularly during tough times, is paramount. Keeping a business is certainly easier than getting new ones. To that end, our Kickstart the Creek partnership with the Lowcountry Development Corporation provides small, low-interest loans to businesses that may have fallen through the cracks of the federal and state programs. Successful businesses that, without the effects of the pandemic, would still be thriving, need help to navigate a new reality. I'm proud for us to participate in their success because their success is our success. Livability means a recreation department that met perhaps the most challenging year in the history of our city with determination and creativity. Changes were made to the layout of a state-of-the-art community and activity center that meant those facilities could continue to be used safely. Our rec department's therapeutic division, of which I could not be prouder, actually more than doubled in size during the pandemic. Thank you to program coordinator Nicole Herrera for her imagination and commitment to serve all who need it. Our gymnastics program is most certainly matching in excellence the facility that it calls home. Coach Brittany, Coach Jamie, and the staff have worked tirelessly to ensure a safe, productive, and fun program. Our participants clearly appreciate it. In fact, participation in gymnastics has actually surpassed our pre-COVID numbers with more than 700 participants. You told us that you wanted a Christmas parade again in Goose Creek. This year, our second parade was even bigger than our first, despite the safety precautions of the pandemic. And this year, we introduced a new event, the Christmas tree lighting at City Hall, complete with a new tree in front of our complex and a new sleigh and a machine that makes snow here in South Carolina. T.J. Rostin is doing a great job as our Director of Recreation, but I know he would admit that his events coordinator, Allison Carter, makes all of us look good. If you enjoy our events like the parade and tree lighting, fall festival, or fabulous fourth, not to mention the food trucks that come to City Hall every two weeks, when you see Allison, thank her. To everyone at our rec department, T.J., Cheryl, Allison, and Nicole aren't alone. Thank you for making it happen especially in a year that we needed to be uplifted like no other. I cannot imagine a better team. As I speak to you tonight, the construction of John McCants Veterans Park continues, and we look forward to its completion later this year. I am pleased to report our first shipment of personalized bricks that will adorn the park's entranceway have arrived. Etched on each of them are the names of our American heroes, the sons and daughters of Goose Creek, who have served our nation's military. The bricks will be among the last additions to the park's construction, and I can't wait for you to see the finished product. I know I'm proud of our Veterans Park, and I know John McCants would be proud too. Goose Creek is a military town. Our connection is real, it's familial. I am proud that we are finally honoring our veterans like we should. The park is not the only thing we have planned to honor our veterans. I know many of you have enjoyed the banners that we've hung throughout the city. To expand on that program, I'm announcing a new initiative that will give Goose Creek families the chance to purchase banners that will go up throughout the city. The banners will bear the photos and name of the special veteran in their lives who they would like to honor. We're planning to do this in conjunction with Veterans Day in 2021 and every Veterans Day to come. Watch our city website and Facebook page in the months ahead for more details. There's one more announcement that I would like to make tonight. Our recreation department is currently planning a brand new, all-inclusive park to serve the capable and handicapable alike. It will be located at the former site of our Casey Center. These plans are still early, but believe me, it's going to be big and it's going to be great. 
And like our gymnastics facility, it's going to be the best in the Southeast. Livability means feeling safe. It means worrying about helping your children with their homework, not about their safety. Our roads are literally being made safer as we speak, as the State Department of Transportation's project on St. James Avenue continues. This project will see a new median constructed from St. James and Highway 52 intersection all the way to Old Monk's Corner Road. And yes, it will include properly timed lights. Make no mistake, this project, for which we have lobbied the state for years, will reduce accidents and save lives. Just since construction began and left turns have been eliminated in front of Duncan, there's not been a single accident. We know that we are safer in Goose Creek because crime is down, and that is a direct result of community policing efforts. I have long been an advocate of community policing. This approach creates a bond between our police officers and the residents they protect. It means better communication. It means more trust. And it works. When searching for a new police chief, it was imperative to me to find a chief with the same commitment to community policing as I had. It's why our national search ended in Atlanta, Georgia, where we successfully recruited Chief Roscoe to come and visit Goose Creek. We are so excited to have her here and so proud of what she's already accomplished. Our National Night Out program was recognized nationally by Academy Sports for its impact on our community. The Hot Pursuit 5K continues to grow and raise money for our Shop with the Badge Christmas program. And following its second year, the Police Department's Trunk or Treat program offers a safe, community-oriented alternative to traditional trick-or-treating. Two weeks ago, I joined Chief Roscoe and a host of police officers at City Hall to watch the Kelly Clarkson show as it aired live across the nation. The show featured Captain Tom Hill of our police department and a little boy named AJ. AJ was diagnosed as autistic at a young age and his mother was concerned with how he might interact with the police and how the police might interact with him in their new city. She reached out to introduce AJ to our department. Soon, a friendship was born between Captain Hill and AJ. Their bond became even stronger when AJ wrote a letter asking Captain Hill to be his godfather. This bond doesn't happen. The impact on AJ and Captain Hill's lives doesn't happen without our commitment to engaging our community. The spirit of that letter from AJ is the spirit of our police force and the spirit of our city. It's a spirit of love and understanding. The nation was given a glimpse of that spirit, and I could not be prouder of Captain Hill and the entire Goose Creek Police Department. Livability means being able to depend on a fire department that is unmatched in the region. In November, Mike Nixon was hired to lead the Goose Creek Fire Department after a national search. Chief Nixon brings a wealth of experience to the position. He arrives in Goose Creek from the Portland Fire Department in Portland, Maine where he served for 25 years and was most recently that department's deputy chief. Chief Nixon grew up around many firefighters and police officers in his own family. As a teenager, he joined the local volunteer fire department in South Portland. Firefighting is his passion. I know our department is looking forward to growing with him. And like our police department, Chief Nixon recognizes the fire department's role in lifting up our community. Did anyone see Santa riding the fire truck throughout the city? That was made possible with the support of Chief Roscoe and Chief Nixon. The city's ability to recruit and hire a talent of Chief Nixon's caliber should make every resident proud. As he begins a new chapter of his career in Goose Creek, I'd like to again thank former Chief Steve Chapman for his decades of service. He built the Goose Creek Fire Department into what it is today, and we owe him a debt of gratitude. Experience matters in city government. Our Department of Public Works is in the capable hands of Director Chuck Denson, and I want to thank Chuck and his team for their outstanding service over the past 12 months and beyond. Outstanding even by their own high standards. That includes Sanitation Division Supervisor Guilford Matthews. Together, their commitment to provide the highest level of service to our citizens and to be the benchmark for service in our industry 
does not go unnoticed and is greatly appreciated. I hope you'll thank them when you see them. I would also like to thank our former city administrator, Jake Broom, for his service to our city. I believe people are where they are at a given time for a reason. Jake was the perfect city administrator for Goose Creek during a time of major transition. His expertise helped us regrow our fund balance and establish a stronger financial position for the city than it had seen in quite some time. Jake is now the Chief Operating Officer for the Municipal Association of South Carolina. Our staff has heard me say many times, it's our responsibility to prepare people for their next job, whether that's here with us or somewhere else. I'm proud to have worked with Jake and I look forward to his leadership on the state level. And finally, I'd like to share a word about our new city administrator, Natalie Ziegler. I got to know Natalie in 2019 as a member of the Board of Directors for the Municipal Association. Immediately, I saw her passion for cities and towns and the impact that good creative government can have on its community. I had seen the success she had in transforming Hartsville into a modern small town hub for business and entertainment. While I interviewed candidates from across the Southeast, I always came back to the realization that Natalie was who Goose Creek needed in this time in our history. She has an innate ability to take our vision and make it visionary. I look forward to working with her for quite some time and I can't wait to see what we build together. Goose Creek is no longer a small town, but it's still our hometown. And it is our hometown made of many different ethnicities and backgrounds and many different paths and dreams. Goose Creek is a quilt woven with a common thread of love for one another and love for our hometown. The book of Ecclesiastes reminds us that two are better than one because if either of them fall down, one can help the other up. Two are better than one here in Goose Creek too. Over the last 12 months, we've met fear and hardship with bravery and determination. We are rising in Goose Creek and we are rising together. Thank you. God bless you and God bless our hometown.